Hi guys, it's Alyssa. I was going to talk to you today about um, something that was on my heart, but God told me to do something instead. So I am here in my closet. As you can see, all my clothes. And this is actually the place that I do um, my quiet time with the Lord every day. And I try to make it in here at least once a day. You can kind of see. But if I'm having a particularly rough day, I get in here three, four, five times a day just so I can um, refocus on God, center on God, especially if I'm getting spiritually attacked or if circumstances in my life are, are pretty rough. I will run into this space. If I'm out of town, I will use my Bible app or I will use um, my Kindle. I have the Bible on my Kindle. And I try, to, I try to get on my Bible app more than I do on my Facebook. I figure if I can check my Facebook while I'm out of town, I should be able to do my quiet time. So this is where I do it. And I read a lot of devotionals. Um, here's one devotional. I think devotionals are really important. I've written several of them. Uh, the Bible has the raw material, but when people write devotionals, they actually take that raw material and they prepare something for you. They prepare something according to their gifts, their talents, according to the revelation that God has given them. And it, I think when we read other people's uh, revelation from the Bible, we get a better perspective because we haven't walked in their shoes. And so we get to walk in their shoes and see God in a different light. So I do read a lot of devotionals. Here's... Oswald Chambers, and I've also written my own uh, devotionals, a lot of them. I've, I've written a one-year devotional that goes through every book in the Bible, Old Testament and New Testament. The other thing I have in here is God gave me a special anointing for myself that I wrote. I actually wrote it for somebody else, and then when I was done, God told me it was for me. And so it's, it's kind of interesting that I was willing to take time to write an anointing for, for somebody else, but I wouldn't do it for myself. And so I think a lot of people are like that, that we will go out of our way to serve or to share God's light to somebody, but we won't do it for ourselves. And, and the giftings and talents that God has given us, each of us, is just as important as the gifts and talents he's given to everybody else. And so we need to be real... Um, cognizant of uh, protecting our calling, protecting our gifts and talents, just as much as we would protect it for our kids or for our friends. And so that's an anointing that God's given me. And then I have three Bibles in here. I actually have more in my house, but I have the New King, New King James Version, I have the NLT, and I have the NIV. I just feel like when I read these different versions, I get just a different insight um, of the word because the word was written in Hebrew, Old Testament, Greek, and the New Testament. And so, you know, English translates it as best as it can, but when you get the different translations, you can get a, a better idea of what uh, God was trying to say in, in the words. Um, here's a few of my books that I've written and I pray over and I pray over the readers of them. Here's a calendar that I put, um, right now, I, I put prayer requests, but right now I'm putting uh, promises in them. Promises that I'm declaring, that I'm prophesying over myself. Uh, we can't rely on other people to declare our promises for us. We actually have to go into God's word and prophesy over ourselves. And, and prophecy just means uh, speaking God's words. And the safest way to speak God's words is to just take it from the Bible. If you take it from the Bible, you're safe because that's God's words. So you just take scriptures from the Bible and the Holy Spirit will give you some specifically for your life. And you just start writing them down and prophesying them over yourself. And so I have this journal given to me by my friend, Monica Lugo. And so I've been writing just promises, promises of what God has told me, God, pro promises of what I want um, in my life and my calling. And then... Here is the Snifty Communion set. These are actually unleavened bread. I'm really excited about this. This is the main reason I wanted to share. Little, little crackers. Um, 
because I was listening to a podcast. I listen to a lot of podcasts of different preachers. And he says he does communion uh, every time he does a quiet time. He, he tries to do it every day, which is awesome. And so I have my, my thing for my, my juice for wine. And then I try to do, I've been doing communion. I'm trying to do it for 40 days. And I've been doing it every day. I'm on my third day. And what is amazing about doing, you know, the bread of God, uh, Jesus came down in flesh and he was broken so uh, his blood could pour out. And so the bread is like his body. And so we break it so the wine, his blood can pour out. And when, when I do the communion at the beginning of my quiet time, it really helps me to focus on the blood of Jesus, the wine of, the wine of Christ and his, and his body and what he did to give me freedom, what he did to save me from, from hell. And I, and I realize if his, if his time on the cross and his resurrection can save me from hell, then he, he could do anything else. Like that is the, the most difficult thing is to be saved from the grips of hell because we all are fall short of the glory of God. None of us can have a relationship with God because we fall short. But through Jesus Christ, we can now have a relationship with God. And then when we die, that relationship continues. And if we don't have a relationship with God um, through Jesus Christ, our lack of relationship will continue when we die. And that's why we're separated. But when I focus on the blood of Jesus Christ and his bread, his body, it just fills me up with so much victory. It fills me up with so much forgiveness. And, and when I focus on him and not on my mistakes and not on um, my imperfections, and I see his blood making me perfect, making me a holy uh, priest and queen of God, that I am pure and holy in God's sight, Otherwise, I couldn't have his, his Holy Spirit inside of me. It's just so empowering. I have this victory that I didn't have to earn, that I didn't have to work for, that was given to me, that his grace shot out 2,000 years ago when he died and res resurrected out of the tomb. And it's just so, it makes every problem in my life, it makes every difficulty, it makes my mistakes seem so small that they almost disappear under his light. They, they disappear under what he did, that he saved me from hell. And being saved from hell makes everything else bearable. It makes this life not so hard. You know, I can make it through this day because I am saved from hell. I get to be with God in heaven forever. And I know my time on this earth is short and I know it's uh, building my faith, making me strong, making me become the person who I'm going to be for eternity. So starting with communion, communion has really just helped my quiet times. It's, it's just one of those awesome things to do. So I would really suggest doing it, just really focusing on the fact that you are saved by grace and, it, and you didn't earn it and it was gifted to you because Jesus loved you. That's how much he loved you, that he would leave his throne in heaven come to this earth, take your sins, die with your sins in him. And the Bible says that he had the strength to give up his life and to take back his life. And so when he took back his life and resurrected himself, he left your sins behind. He left them in hell. And so now we are sinless before God. And so when we go to heaven, we're not going to be judged on our sins. Our sins are wiped clean. We are going to be judged on what we did with our life. And when you, when, you, when you have that in mind, it makes you not let your mistakes hold you down because your mistakes are not going to be counted against you. What's going to be counted against you if you let your mistakes stop you from doing God's will? And we can't do that because God doesn't see them. We have new mercies every day. And so whenever we fall, we stumble, we make mistakes, we have to shake it off, we have to get back up, and we have to run our race knowing that only the things we produce for God are going to be judged in heaven, not our mistakes. And so that is really encouraging. And the last thing I have in here, and this is just a little side note before I go, it's um, some myrrh or frankincense. I can't remember. I got it from Israel. And sometimes you just got to anoint yourself. You, you can't expect other people to do it. You have the Holy Spirit inside of you. You have his strength and victory. So I just say, 
take your own oil and anoint yourself and anoint victory over your life, anoint a calling over your life. Don't wait for someone else to do it because they're too busy worrying about themselves. So take your oil, anoint yourself, and run your race. So this is it. This is my, my area of quiet time. And I hope you like it. The kids don't see me in here, which is great. So I hope you guys have a blessed day, and I'll see you next time.